Hi, we are Engineering Brothers and of course you can feel that this is our fifth problem over here and uh, as per our previous analogy if you do follow our previous videos you can understand my or get my point here that we have taken a simple translational system so all we need we just do required to convert this translational system into rotational system and after that we should find out the transfer function for the same but the speciality of this problem is uh, first i should uh, come out with our translational diagram what is that first uh, i am going to use the nodal method that is why i should identify that for the left left one i should consider this one is our x1 for this one and for our right hand side we should have the x2 now we should find out what are the elements or what are the passive elements are connected with this x1 so x1 is quite naturally connected with our m1 so without wasting any time let us do draw that over here so this is our m1 so x1 is connected with m1 and uh, the x1 is applied or on the x1 the force is applied on our x1 so i should include the force element over here so this is our force so the force element has applied on our node x1 that is why you can see that and the arrow is being given over here okay i want to repeat that over here i have distinctively considered the x1 and x2 over here which you can see that and for our translational system the x1 and x2 are our simply our linear displacement so which i have intended over here so x1 and x2 and with x1 i can see that the m1 has connected over here and the force or the required force is applied on our node x1 that is why i have drawn the translational diagram over here and in the middle part or in between our x1 and x2 i can see that in the middle part the dashboard system is been included which is been indicated as our b so this is our dashboard system so this is our b the dashboard system and with our x2 or at x2 the m2 or the mass block has connected you can see that the mass or the body of this element of the mass has connected or there is a certain linear displacement of our x2 so x2 should be connected with our m2 so this is our m2 and the spring system has connected with our rigid wall and the spring is our k2 so let us include that over here which is so this is our k2 that is connected with our x2 as well so this is our k2 I want to refresh or remind you this portion once again. How do I consider this diagram for our translational system? First, uh, what is the objective? Always keep it in your mind. This problem or this diagram should be converted into our rotational system because uh, ultimately this is our rotational system problem 5. Okay. So we have taken a simple translational diagram or translational system and I have written over here and for our analysis or for the analogous concept we do know that by using this chart we can convert our said translational system into rotational system. So the force is analogous with our torque for our translational system. The left hand parameters are evident for our right hand side that parameters are equivalent with the left one okay so the force is analogous with our torque linear acceleration is analogous with our angular acceleration linear velocity is being related with our angular velocity and linear displacement which we have indicated in our current problem as x1 and x2 that is being replaced with our for the rotational system that one should be our angular displacement which we have indicated as theta for the same parameter we have got the mass 
which is been applicable for our translational system that is analogous uh, for our rotational system and that is analogous with our moment of inertia so this one is our moment of inertia and b means our dashboard system that is analogous with our viscous friction coefficient and how to form this viscous friction coefficient we do know that under the disc or under the rotating body there is some uh, viscous liquid is present under that body and because of that friction parameter the viscous friction coefficient that is evident or that is true for the rotational system but for the translational system we have got the spring system but for the rotational system the shaft stiffness that is been reflected over here so we have drawn the much needed translational system that we are trying to convert to our rotational system and we have already given you the analogous concept in our previous videos so please do follow that videos on that videos we have formed or we have created the balance between our translational and rotational system over there if you have missed that videos please do follow that videos on that videos we have reflected our objectives regarding our concepts now this is our translational diagram and we have used our nodal method to draw the diagram okay now we should interchange these factors into our rotational system how to do that just by using this analogous chart so force should be transferred into our torque so this one is our force so this one should be converted into our much needed applied torque that is true for our rotating body or for our rotating system the m1 should be replaced with our moment of inertia which is our j1 so m1 should be replaced with our j1 so this one should be our j1 okay for the concept of our b which is true for our uh, the b is nothing but the dashboard system for our translational system but the concept for our rotational system the b is been considered as though the sign is same or, or the indication is same but because of the presence of our viscous fluid the viscous friction coefficient is evident for our rotational system so for the b the viscous friction coefficient will be present but for the translational system this is been considered as our dashboard system so this will keep remain same now if you move on towards our displacement or linear displacement so x1 should be replaced with our theta1 so this one should be our theta1 this is our theta 1 or angular displacement 1 or angular displacement at node 1. This one should be our node 1. I should remember that. This one is our node 1. This one is our node 2. So at node 1, the angular displacement for our rotational system from this diagram is theta 1. Now, if you consider the M2, so similarly for our left hand side this one should be our L2 not L2 the J2 which is moment of inertia and this X2 should be replaced with our theta2 as we do know that at node 2 the angular displacement should be our theta2 and this is our final diagram for our rotational system I want to repeat that I have first drawn the translational diagram over here just by using our nodal method with our x1 and x2 and what are the elements are connected I have written over here and uh, I have the list or I have the relation in between our translational and rotational system all we need we just do require to use the analogous concept to convert our translational system into rotational system so just by using this chart we have changed the force applied force into applied torque the next one is our linear displacement which is interchanged with our angular displacement theta 1 the mass which is m that is replaced with our moment of inertia j1 this one 
and in between our x1 and x2 which is quite naturally the theta 1 theta 2 so at the node 2 so the x2 is interchanged with our theta 2 x is theta and here another m2 is present in our previous diagram or previous portion of the video that is replaced with our another moment of inertia factor which is j2 and the spring so this is not our spring constant for our rotational system this is our shaft stiffness the shaft stiffness uh, the shaft stiffness that is equivalent with our spring for our translational system and i have finally drawn the nodal diagram for our rotational system now let us consider our problem statement we have got our two displacement more specifically the angular displacement so we should come out with our two different analogies of transfer function the first one is our the first one is output which is our theta 1 s divided by input input means our applied torque so theta 1 s divided by tau s that is our first one our first problem statement the second problem statement will be theta 2 s which is the angular displacement at our node 2 divided by our torque tau s which is our second transfer function analogy so these two ratios are our transfer functions and we are aiming to find out or come out with the expression of these two crucial transfer functions over here i want to give you two minutes to note down up to this one because this diagram is very very essential and after that we should start our proceedings to find out the transfer function okay the time starts now
in our previous part of our analysis we have shown you how to convert the translational system into rotational system so what are the crucial process or steps first i have drawn uh, this uh, circuit diagram in the form of nodal analysis and just by using this analogous chart we have converted our translational system into rotational system in our current problem we should come out with this ratio that is the transfer function for our said uh, given problem in our next video we will come out with this theta 2s divided by tau s that will be our uh, that will be for our next video so i am focusing on our theta 1s divided by tau s that is our main point of concern for our current video okay now to do that if i consider only the node 1 i have got the j1 has connected with this j1 the torque has applied on this node 1 okay and at the common part at 1 the angular displacement is theta 1 in between our 1 and 2 we have got the dashboard system which is connected in between our 1 and 2 so this is our point of concern if you do apply the dl number principle on our node 1 now what is the equation the torque according to the dl number principle we have got torque plus resistive torque and the summation of this two these two torque elements should be our zero so what are the resistive torque elements over here let us find out that over here so we have go applied a given torque which you can see over here now the resistive torque are all in the form of minus or in the form of negative sign so what are the resistive part of our torque which is j1 d2 theta 1 divided by dt2 this one is done and the minus as i have taken one as our reference compared to our two that is why the theta 1 should be greater compared with our theta 2 so at the node 2 the angular displacement is theta 2 so what should be our equation the equation should be b d dt of I, as i have taken one as our reference quite naturally the difference between theta 1 minus theta 2 which is, is equal to 0 this is our equation or final equation if you do apply the dl number principle on our node 1 now we should rearrange that so this diagram is no longer required by me i you i should erase this portion as i have already got the equation over here this is our time domain equation now if you do transfer the two minus elements to the right hand side for our equation what is going to be the equation the equation is torque which is nothing but j1 d2 theta 1 divided by dt2 plus b which is our viscous friction coefficient d dt of theta 1 minus theta 2 this is our equation this is of course our time domain equation if you do follow our previous videos you can do follow that over here now the next step is quite simple we should apply the laplace transform on our current equation what is that if you do apply the laplace transform on this given equation what we have got the tau should be tau s this one is j1 s square theta 1 s this one is plus b s theta 1 s minus b s theta 2 s now we should take the common of theta 1s and theta 2s from this expression what is that if you take the common of our theta 1s inside our bracket i have got j1 s square plus bs okay and this one is minus bs theta 2s this is our first expression if you do apply the dl number principle on our node 1 so i should note down this equation over here 
what is that i should write it over here the tau s which is nothing but theta 1 s inside our bracket i have got g1 s square plus b s minus b s theta 2 s minus b s theta 2 s i should consider for our note 2 that is our next thing to do that as i have written the equation over here so this portion is uh, i should erase this portion because the next part is very very simple or straightforward let us do apply the d'alembert principle on our note 2 i have got our note 2 i should separately draw that so this is our 2 with this 2 i can see that the moment of inertia has connected which is j2 and the k2 is connected so this is our k2 in between our 2 and 1 i can see that the viscous friction coefficient element which is which we have indicated as b is being present so this is our b that is being present and this is our one okay and nodal at node one the angular displacement is our theta one so this is our theta one and at two the angular displacement is theta two okay and you can see that there is not a single torque element is present in our given nodal system or nodal analysis so all these elements are with a sign of negative as this these elements are resisting our applied torque so what is the form of our expression the expression should be our minus j2 d2 theta 2 divided by dt2 minus our k2 into theta 2 minus in the common part right now as i have taken 2 as our reference compared to our 1 i can say that the viscous friction coefficient which is b d dt of as i have taken 2 as our reference factor over here i can say that theta 2 minus theta 1 which is equal to 0 now if you transfer the or if you take the common of minus and do transfer that at the right hand side for our equation these all these minus will turn into plus so this is our time domain equation if you do apply the laplace uh, if you do apply the d'alembert principle on our node 2 you can see that this is our time domain equation now let us do convert this time domain equation or expression into laplace domain so after we have applied the laplace transform of this given equation i have got j2 s square theta 2s plus k2 theta 2s plus bs theta 2s minus bs theta 1s which is equal to 0 this is our equation now in the next step we should take the common of theta 1s and theta 2s over here what is that if you take the common after this step i should write the equation over here if you take the common of theta 2s what is been present inside our bracket inside our bracket i have got j2 s square j2 s square plus k2 plus b s okay and if you transfer this factor to the right hand side of our equation i have got b s theta 1 s so this is our equation 2 and this one is our equation 1 with this with the help of these two equations 
we should find out this ratio which is nothing but the transfer function for our present problem and I have come out with our another transfer function analogy which will be coming for our next videos. I want to give you two minutes to note down up to this one and after that I should conclude with our expression for our transfer function. Hope you have understood our total analogy over here. If you still have any doubts, please let us know in the comment section for better understanding. And we are always looking forward to improve our channel. So what are you waiting for? Please do subscribe our channel. Hit the bell icon for more updates and stay tuned to our channel because lot of exciting videos are coming. The time starts now. In our previous part, if you do apply the D'Alembert principle on our node 1, we have got this equation and for the same, if you do or for the same procedure, if you do apply the D'Alembert principle on our node 2, we have got this is our equation. Now tell me what is the best way to find out this ratio or in total concept the transfer function for our rotational system. So let us do that. What is the procedure? The procedure is very very simple.
from this we have got theta 2 s which is nothing but b s theta 1 s divided by this whole factor which is j 2 s square plus k 2 plus b s okay k 2 this one is k 2 okay now finally if you do put this expression of theta 2 in our previous equation we have got the matching for our ratio so let us do that so applied torque which is theta 1 s multiplied by j 1 s square plus b s in after that minus b s multiplied by theta 2 s theta 2 s means this whole factor once again that is multiplied with b s theta 1 s divided by this factor which is j 2 s square plus k 2 plus b s ok now as we have put this factor over here so this expression is no longer required so i can erase this portion now you can take the common of theta 1 s theta 1 s if you take the common of theta 1 s what is being present inside our bracket inside our bracket i have got j1 s square plus b s minus b square s square these two should be multiplied and under this we have got j2 s square plus k2 plus b s okay and this should be tau s is equal to this one from the, after this expression we have got this one we only take the common of our theta 1 s okay now the final answer what should be the final answer the final answer should be quite simple always do remember the definition for our transfer function the definition for our transfer function is output divided by input if you do convert that differential equation or that differential relation into Laplace transform we have got the definition of transfer function so ultimately the transfer function is nothing but theta 1 s divided by tau s tau s means the applied torque on our given rotating system and theta 1 is what what is the theta 1 s the angular displacement at our node 1 that is our theta 1 s this is the definition for our transfer function which is output divided by input for our rotational system what is that the expression should be 1 divided by this whole thing 1 divided by this whole thing which is j1 s square plus v s minus b square s square divided by j2 s square plus k2 plus b s this is our final answer for our analysis of our transfer function in our next part we are concentrating on our theta 2 s divided by tau s but that is the thing for our next class if you have any doubts regarding our expression or regarding our analysis for our analogy please let us know in the comment section we will be there always try to help you and we will try our level best to improve your concepts okay
so that's it thank you and goodbye If you like my video so what are you waiting for please do subscribe my channel hit the bell icon for more updates and stay tuned to the channel thank you and goodbye